Hello everybody, thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, today um, I will be talking about BD footprint extraction using very high resolution satellite imagery uh, using a deep learning approach. This work has been done uh, in collaboration with the joint open laboratories of the Telecom Italia and uh, the Polytechnic of Torino, which uh, have, among all the other uh, type of expertise, provide also uh, deep learning applications for object detections uh, using uh, uh, images from uh, each, uh, every, every kind of images. So uh, this is the outline of the presentation. It's a very simple outline. We will talk about first about the goal of the, of the work, how it has been done, so the methodologies use it, uh, the outcomes obviously, and uh, maybe what will happen in the future, nobody knows, but uh, we will try to make a prediction. So uh, we will talk about the goal. The goal, as stated before, is building footprint extraction from very high resolution imagery. And uh, you will be asking yourself, but why do we do this type of work? Uh, uh, this work, I think, is very important to delineate uh, uh, damage assessment. It's very important to uh, create a vision of a, a prior uh, state before a disaster or any kind of uh, type of disaster, disaster that is uh, Affect, affects uh, buildings and uh, is very important for mapping, mostly mapping uh, rur uh, rural areas or remote areas uh, which in, where it's not easy to get uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of um, information and uh, also for population estimation is very important because uh, when you think about uh, Constructions. You think about the people that live of those constructions. And finally, uh, last but not least, it's very uh, useful for cartography update. Uh, in this mean, by uh, using uh, very specific images, like uh, very high resolution images, uh, and with uh, determinate uh, type of uh, characteristics, we can do also cartography updates. So I will talk to you now about how all this uh, work has been done. This work has been done uh, by uh, using a trained uh, convolutional neural network. And uh, I want to state <coughs> that this is the part that uh, was uh, mainly done by our colleagues from the uh, joint open laboratories. Uh, so therefore, if there are any questions, I will kindly address them to them <laughs> in a second moment. But uh, I, I want to explain briefly what happen what's, hap what's happening here. Uh, we, they start by dividing in tiles every image. Uh, after that, applying on each uh, block of 20, 256 by 256 pixel uh, convolution. So they encode uh, at every le uh, five levels uh, of uh, convolutions. Uh, they found out also that uh, for this purpose, uh, only five uh, uh, steps were uh, sufficient to do all this, uh, this training. And moreover, a uh, final important part is the decoder, uh, decoder part, so the part in the bottom, this, this, uh, this block here. Because uh, to get to the resolution, to the original resolution of the image, they didn't apply a bilinear uh, type of um, interpolation, therefore losing uh, image information, but uh, they applied uh, information from the, from the image, uh, from the, the previous block, from the corresponding opposite block. So by um, saying this, you, you will say, what's the difference with already existing methods? Why, why, why do we do this? We do this because uh, um, the network, we train this network using different images from those uh, on which is applied in a second uh, moment and uh, then it's uh, deployed completely automatically. So uh, again, uh, we talk about the fact that we used six very high resolution images, data sets, uh, uh, to train the CNN. And uh, the characteristic of the images, we tried to match them uh, very closely to uh, real satellite, uh, to real uh, life uh, applications. So we didn't select the uh, very high resolution images that had uh, um, characteristics that were uh, low off nadir angles or uh, uh, very uh, clear images. Uh, we tried to uh, use images with very different off nadir angles and uh, also with uh, very different uh, times of the season. So we used uh, summer images where the, uh, the 
shadows were uh, not present, but also uh, winter images where the shadows were quite uh, present. So after the, uh, having done this, we trained, uh, we applied the uh, convolutional neural network on uh, three data sets that were completely different from the one that we uh, the, that the one from which we trained uh, uh, the image, and uh, we uh, obtained this uh, type of outcome. So this is one of the three images that uh, a sample of one of the three images on which we applied uh, the the network. And uh, as we can see here, uh, these are the uh, true positive values, so the values that were extracted correctly from the convolutional neural network. These are the false positive, so those, uh, those uh, parts of the image where uh, the network uh, predicted a building, but it was not a building. And these are the false negative, so the places where there was a building, but uh, there was, uh, but the, the network didn't predict anything. In the end, this is how it uh, looks on, uh, on the original image. So uh, by, I want to show you also some quality metrics about this, uh, this work. As we can see, uh, we have user accuracies that are uh, above 70%. We still have some problems with the producer accuracy, and therefore we still have some uh, false negatives that are on 40, 45% uh, in some cases, but we have data sets where the accuracies are quite acceptable, like uh, one of the three data sets is, uh, I think it's, it's quite good. But this is not sufficient. We wanted, I wanted to do a traditional way of classifying an image to make a comparison on, uh, with, with uh, the CNN. And uh, we, on the, on the left, we have a classification using a Malanobis distance uh, algorithm uh, by MV 5.4, uh, if I remember correctly. And uh, I trained this, uh, uh, this, uh, algorithm by giving ROIs from the same image and not only building ROIs but also um, but also other type of, uh, of classes like uh, uh, vegetation, streets, uh, uh, water and uh, trying to uh, get the most of the, out of the algorithm. And as you can see uh, it's still not uh, uh, comparable to what we achieved uh, using the convolutional neural network. As you can see, the true positives are very much are much lower than the uh, true positive from the CNN. Uh, this is the comparison with uh, the the previous data. As we, you can see, in this case, the lower the better. So, uh, in one case, the Malanobis distance uh, algorithm outperformed by a lot. Or <laughs> Our convolutional neural network, but we think this is, was due to the type of image uh, and the fact that the image was uh, with uh, a very low of nadir angle and uh, therefore uh, was quite uh, easy to uh, delineate the, the building footprints. As you can see, in this case, was uh, only three uh, percent of the pixel were uh, misplaced. But going further to the other data set, we can see that uh, uh, the CNN. Out, uh, outperforms uh, in uh, one case by doubling the performance of the Malanobis distance and in another case by tripling it, uh, more than tripling it. So what will happen in the future? Well, nobody knows, but uh, we will try to train the CNN uh, using more classes. So not only rely on the building, not building uh, pixel, but also giving it more, uh, more data as input. So try to put in classes like vegetation and uh, water and trying to uh, see if uh, this will improve the, the convolutional neural network and uh, moreover use uh, uh, more virtual samples. We use the only uh, linear uh, modification of the samples. So the, the original samples were only rotated and flipped. So they didn't have the transformations that were uh, Different in this case by using uh, different type of uh, virtual samples, like skewing them and giving them a uh, different perspective. Maybe we try to match uh, some uh, characteristic of uh, uh, real uh, satellite image. And uh, uh, later, uh, and the last thing is that we will try to do a domain adaptation. So we will try to give it even more uh, building footprints. So not only from uh, case studies that are uh, present in Europe, all these case studies that we analyze were in Europe, but try to also to give them 
other type of uh, uh, areas. Finally, uh, just uh, <laughs> as uh, I was preparing the presentation, uh, Microsoft just uh, released one uh, <laughs> 125 million buildings over, over the US. So, uh, as you know, every time you try to do something innovative or uh, groundbreaking, there's somebody else uh, out there that's uh, doing much more better than you, but with, <laughs> with other type of resources. So <laughs> We will see. Maybe they only they will only do um, the United States, and uh, we will do the rest of the world. So who knows? <laughs> uh, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, ask me. And uh, if you want to contact me, feel free to uh, write me an email.